What's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back to the old subscribers. I'm doing a little bit of a different kind of video today because there's been a few things that have been kind of like brought to my attention. And I want to tell you guys um, a day in the life of Emily today. Let me sage myself. Um, first off, what I wanted to say is um, a huge thank you and... Can you say gratitude? <laughs> a huge gratitude? No, that doesn't make any sense. But you know what I'm trying to say. Like, thank you to all the people who email me, all the people who have gotten personal readings, all the people who have donated to the channel, all the people who have just supported me in the, the best way possible as this year has been kind of... Um, you know, in the movies when <laughs> it shows the inside of a tornado and it's kind of like everything's kind of like flying around in a circle and you're standing in the middle and you're like, this is cool, this is all right. You know what I mean? Everything's kind of a shit show. That's kind of what this year has been like for me. Um, but I wanted to say thank you to everybody who supported me, who's put up with me, um, who's had the patience with me because I haven't really felt the greatest, you know, the health problems. I swear to God, <laughs> once you hit 30, it's like a brick wall. You know, you used to be able to run head on into walls and like fall down and stuff. But it's like, if you fall down now, bro, you go, you're down. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really considering a life alert button. You know what I mean? Because who's going to come get me up? You know what I mean? Like literally I'm going to have a phone call one of these days where I was like, I really, I'm down and I can't get up. You know what I mean? Like that's how I feel. But, um, I just want to say thank you for the support and to all the people who commented on my videos, which are general, by the way, um, you should really get a personal reading. Please do not make life decisions based on a, a video that I do for, you know, how many subscribers I have plus the people who creep on my channel and act like they're not there. <laughs> but y'all are watching. I know y'all are fucking watching. But it's cool. You know what I mean? Um, it's all love. But um, I just want you to, like, to think of it in a bigger picture because tarot cards are cool and everything. Um, you know, psychic shut. Psychic shut. Psychic shit is cool and everything, but don't base life decisions off of what I say in my videos. Um, if you need to know something, if you want to know something, get a personal reading. But this is like the possible outcome. This is what things that are going on behind the scenes. This is what could happen. But what you have to remember in this game is that everything needs to be taken with a grain of salt because there is also a thing called free will. People could know without no doubts in their mind because a lot of times when people get readings, they already know the answer, right? Right half the time we know subconsciously we know when our intuition kicks in but we we second guess it we're like yeah maybe not but please get a personal reading or just um even if it's not for me I'm not saying like I'm not hyping myself up like I know everything <laughs> I mean I'm kind of cool like I would I would get a reading for me because I think I'm legit but I'm not the, the person for everybody but I, I'm just saying this is not something that you should base like any major decision on unless you know for a fact you know that this is something that actually happened blah 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 I just want to say that because I've had a few comments lately where I'm like you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to affect people's lives in that way where you're like going out and you're doing stuff based on what I say, because I don't know if it's for you technically, you know, half the time when I give messages, I have no idea who they're for half the time. I mean, it could be for anybody, especially when they're general readings on my channel. Just saying. Um, I also wanted to, um, just say it like one time for the one time that this is the time of year where everybody kind of needs to be humble because I, <laughs> including myself, which I consider myself a humble person. Um, I consider myself pretty down to earth, but there's so many things that have happened to me in, in my life where it's just like, I need to remember that I'm a human too. You know, like I make a lot of mistakes. I am not perfect. Um, I have an attitude problem. I swear a little bit too much. Sometimes I like to drink, you know what I mean? Um, I don't like getting up in the morning. I don't like mornings. I don't like alarm clocks. And I've seriously considered throwing my phone, but I didn't, which matters because it's like $800 phone. I mean, shout out to Google Pixel, you know what I'm saying? But um, I just want everybody that's stressing out right now to breathe, you know what I mean? Because we all have things where we're stressed out. Now, 
everybody who knows me personally, or even if you don't know, I live in northern Minnesota, okay? So it's like negative seven when you check the, the, the weather in the morning and then your kids have to get up for school. First of all, I have seven alarms. Not only does it go off at 645, it goes off at 7, 715, 730, 745. When that 745 mark hits and I'm not outside, then it's automatically like, God damn it. And it takes me like 20 minutes to put my boots on. <laughs> I'm like flying outside. I'm like sitting in my car. I'm like, it's freezing. It's, I can't feel my fingers. I can't see out of the window. They didn't even like plow or anything. <laughs> I live in an apartment complex literally where I see the little dude on the little snow plow thing. And he's like plowing everybody else. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, did y'all get stressed out during the day? Like you forgot there's a whole other buildings up here. Like we could get in the shaft. <laughs> like, so my brand new suede boots are like, thank God they go up to my knees because I'm like <laughs> trying to run through snow and you should see my hair and maybe I have eyelashes on, but I have no makeup. So my hair <laughs> was like out to here. And I'm like, I have my hood on like this. And I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm just like driving down the road and stuff. I get my kids to school. I think my son was like five minutes late to school. Okay. I'm pulling up like around the corner to get on the freeway to come back to where I live. And God damn it, if a fucking sheriff doesn't whip around... <laughs> and pull me over and you remember back in the day like I'm not saying do this technically but you remember when you could like whip on your seatbelt and not get caught for it okay well <laughs> I get caught every fucking time I never get away with anything ever I don't get away with anything like it's just like you know those people who like can cry or like show their boobs or something I'm like fuck I forget about First of all, I think I forget I'm a girl. I forget that I have boobs or that maybe I should pretend or like act or something when I get pulled over. No, he pulls me over. He's like, do you know what I'm pulling you over for? I'm like, no. Because I, believe me when I tell you, I whipped, <laughs> I whipped on the seatbelt because I had like a little bit of room. There was like a few cars behind me and I'm like, okay, this is cool. I can just play this off. No. I'm like, no, I don't. And he's like, uh, well, about 10 seconds ago, you didn't have your seatbelt on, ma'am. I'm like, son of a bitch. What kind of apparatus, what kind of like program or like spyware do these motherfuckers have? And yes, I said motherfucker, but I also say that this isn't for kids. Anyways, what kind of security, like what do y'all have in your cars where you know that I'm not wearing a seatbelt, bro, because I'm tired of it? I used to be able to just whip my seatbelt on and like throw the whole distraction thing where I'm pretending like I'm yelling at my kids or like I'm looking at my at my window or something. No, this morning they were not fucking playing with me, okay? And he's like, well, 10 seconds ago you didn't have your seatbelt on. I'm like, oh. And I had to, sh I have to shut up at that point because I'm a horrible liar and I probably would have told him the truth. Like, well, I whipped it on after, you know what I mean? Like, I can't sit there and be like, well, I have my seatbelt on the whole time because I don't know what kind of radar thing they have going on, but he knew I didn't have it on. So I'm sitting there and he's like, do you have a driver's license? I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Why do they ask you where you're coming from, where you're going, what school your kids go to, what apartment you live in? I'm like, do you want some blood, bro? Do you want a fucking, like a fingerprint? Do you want like a, my liver maybe? Considering all the fucking no seatbelt tickets I have, maybe I should just give up an organ. I don't know. You know what I mean? Or am I not the right person to donate organs? Anyways, I'm just saying like... I don't know what organs I'm actually going to have to give up when that, <laughs> when that day comes. They're going to be looking through stuff like, we can't do anything with this liver or her lungs. It's kind of a dead end. I mean, her eyes are kind of pretty, so I don't even know. But I'm just saying, like, it's got to be like my seventh or eighth ticket. And he comes back to the car after he runs my license. He's like, well, you know, um, after the first warning we give you, we can't give you warnings anymore. We have to give you tickets. And I'm like, yeah, that's what the last cop said. Son of a bitch. Why did you say that? You know what I mean? Like, this is why I have to shut up in certain instances like this. Because I shouldn't be talking. So I just have to, like, stare ahead. And that's kind of what messes me up, too. Because my face is always like this. And it doesn't matter what I've done in my entire life. Because, let's face it, I'm not exactly a gangster. I'm not exactly, like, you know, doing anything legal. But I always get paranoid. And I don't really, like, stand with the police type of thing. You know what I'm saying? blue blood or whatever I'm just like mm, kind of on the fence about it because there's been a lot of sketchy shit going on and after he's asking me like 14 million questions I'm just like all right you know what I mean I take my ticket 
Drive safe. Have a good day. Um, you kind of wrecked my day, sir. Haven't even had any coffee. I look like I slept in my car right now. But you know what, sir? You have a good day, too. You know what I mean? Just fucking run it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why? Why? And then, a little bit later, my day goes on. And I get a call from the Humane Society where our family animals have been because I needed somewhere to bring my cat Eve who mind you is a year old and her little whore ass had seven babies and when I was in the process of moving and staying with a friend and I also have a guinea pig I'm like I brought him there I'm like I don't really know what to do with them um we don't have anywhere for them to go but we do want them back blah 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 and they're like okay we'll keep them um, they ended up finding homes for all the babies, um, giving her shots, feeding them. They've been taking care of them. I think they're in like some kind of foster home or something. And then she calls me in today and she goes, well, your kitty is going down for her surgery tomorrow to be fixed. And um, we're going to need you to bring $200 in um, on Thursday to bring them home. Or basically, I can't have my animals unless I come up with $200 to come and get them. Normally, this would be okay, but I'm sitting here like, I don't have the $200 to go and get my cat out, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I'm sitting here like, well, if I come up with this money, like this is going to have to be um, the main Christmas present for my kids at this point because yes, we want our animals back. Yes, I understand why it was 200 after they fixed all the babies, they fed them. You know, they had to keep Eve for so long because she was nursing the babies and then they had to wait for her milk to dry up and now she's ready for her surgery and then they're giving her more shots. So literally, they probably spent thousands of dollars between all of the damn babies that her six pound self decided to get impregnated with. So I'm just sitting here like... At my new apartment, which I'm very thankful for, you know, a lot of things in my life have been coming together slowly but surely, but I'm just sitting here like, we spend so much money every year on, do you know how much Christmas trees are? First of all, I'm like, why are Christmas trees so expensive? I don't even want, I feel like I've either, someone's either given me one, I I really feel like literally someone's always given me a tree. <laughs> Because I've never had to buy one. And I'm looking at the store. I'm like, I am not buying a fucking $50 Christmas tree. Why? Why is a plastic tree so much money? And then you got to get all the stuff to put on it. So I haven't even bought one. And at this point, I'm like, I am not going to keep celebrating these pagan holidays. Because they're built on a bunch of bullshit where you go completely broke giving your kids toys where they don't even give a shit. Every year that I've gotten my kids a bunch of um, toys, my twins especially, they like the, the boxes and the shit that it comes in or they'll open one or two presents and they don't give a shit about the rest because it's like they don't even have time to process or like the one present that they have and then there's a bunch more and none of it really gets played with. It gets stomped on and the head's ripped off and, you know, usual wear and tear for the kids and it's just like, I don't like getting this type of, like information especially early in the morning and I was like kind of like feeling bad about it. I'm like I feel like horrible considering any other time I used to work to the point where my kids were in daycare like six seven days a week and I would bust my ass and I was making quite a bit of money and I didn't have to worry about any stuff like this I never had to worry about it if there was a $200 be able to like fine you know here's the money run my card I've Literally, my daycare, all the places had my card number and I would just call them and tell them to run it and everything would be fine. And I'm sitting in this moment and I'm just like, this is crazy for me. You know what I mean? Like, I've never been here, but at the same time, I need to be humble because in the last couple of months, I did, um, I do have a three bedroom. I do have a vehicle to drive. I do have a place for me and my family to come back together. Maybe there isn't a lot of stuff in here, but it's just like, you know, when you start over and you have to buy everything new because I literally left everything in my house. We're talking clothes, beds, dressers. I, I walked away from it because it was just that kind of a situation where, I kind of got in over my head and I didn't want to deal with it. So if I didn't have to go there and look at it, then it really wasn't real in my reality, which it is real, but we're not going to talk about that right now. But I just feel like when things, when you were broken down like this and when things happen, it's just like, we have to remember where we come from, where we've been. And it's like, this is not the first time I fucked my life up. Let's be honest. This is probably like my third time. <laughs> I don't know, you know, we've, I've been down, I've been up, I've been down, I've been up, I've been down, I've been up. But I, one thing I can say is that after everything that I've been through, I always come back up in a better way with, I, it, and that for me doesn't include things. You know, I've had brand new cars. I was a homeowner. Um, 
my kids had everything that they constantly needed. We had every all the, you know what I mean? Anything that they could want, we'd go into a store. But it's just like, we've been there before. And now here, it's like, this is where I actually appreciate. Because when you don't have something, when you have to to struggle or like try to come up with money at the last minute. Like this is the thing where it's like, this is the learning lesson for me. This is something that I need to remember because where I'm going on my journey and, and where I meant to be in this life, it doesn't include any of the material shit. And I just want to say like, at the end of the day, when we die, when our body, which is not exactly our soul or our spirit, but when our body goes in that box, we go alone. We don't get to bring the cars and the clothes and the toys and the animals and all of this shit with us. We go alone. We come into this world alone. We go out alone, you know, and we need to stop putting so much emphasis on the things and the people that we think that are meant to be in our lives forever because it's never going to be like that. It's never going to be like that. There's people that come into our lives that are meant to teach us a lesson. There are things that come into our lives when we're never going to stop learning. If you think you're at a place in your life right now where you learned all the lessons and you know when you blub, you don't know shit. I promise you, you're going to go through another time in your life where you're going to learn a lot more and it never ends. And I encourage everyone to never stop learning. Never give up even when things are just like so fucking crazy because I, I mean... In reality, everything was kind of put in perspective and it was a perspective I didn't want to see because I usually have my own and I wanted things to go like, you know, when those big, (laughs) yes, I'm comparing myself to those big Clydesdale horses, but they have those things on their eyes and they're only focused on, on like what's in front of them because everything else would be a distraction and they would get spooked, whatever. What I'm saying is moments like today have put everything in perspective one, maybe I should wear a seatbelt, but two, I'm claustrophobic and I feel like <laughs> if I'm too boxed in and I feel like I can't breathe, then I can't escape and I feel like, you know, how mice and stuff are like fight or flight and you just want to be able to escape really fast. It's how I feel when I'm in a vehicle. I want to be able to get out. <laughs> I want to be able to move. But I'm just saying, I should know by now, you know, to put my seatbelts on. Because I have seven tickets. But that's a lesson that I didn't want to learn. That's a lesson that I didn't want to do. You know, obviously I'm not getting away with anything. (laughs) I can't even think of a time I've actually gotten a warning. Probably seven years ago when I got my first one. I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, so many things are going to humble us. So many things are going to bring us to our knees. But at the same time, what are we focusing on? Are we focusing on what we don't have, what we need, what we think we need? Or are we focusing on... The things that we have in front of us. Um, The moments that we take for granted when it's with our kids, when it's with um, just laughing about something stupid, you know, um, focusing on being in a warm place rather than outside somewhere or not knowing how you're going to eat the next day. You know, it's just like we have a lot to be thankful for and I want everyone to remember that as well as myself. And I'm not just putting... You need to do that. I'm saying that for myself as well. Aiden! And I just think, like, especially now when these holidays are shoved down our throat where it's like if we don't get the brand new um, fucking media, whatever the TV look, you know, all the toys and shit that are on TV and whatever the new craze is for whatever fucking toy is, if you can't afford to get that, don't feel bad about it. Um, be thankful for the little things and let's teach our kids that it's not about the presence and the things either because they're going to come to a place in their life where they're going to be sitting in the exact same shoes that I am right now where they're not going to be able to give or you know focus on the right things because that's the only way we can really change this world to not focus so much on the material things because Greed is one of the seven deadly sins and it's also one of the levels of hell that none of us really get out of because we don't put our focus on the right things and until we can change our perspective, until we can rise above things, until we can humble ourselves because that's the main thing is that there's a lesson in everything and we can either focus on the detriment of the situation or we can focus on what did I learn from this? What am I supposed to be learning? What am I not seeing because it's not something that fits what my ego says that it should be you know 
it's a chance for us to learn. It's a chance for us to start over again. It's a chance for us to be real for one fucking second in a fake ass world. You don't have to do what everyone else is doing or say what everyone else is saying or believe 90% of the shit that you were taught that it's up to you on your journey on what you decide to learn and what you decide to see that matters. I hope everyone has a good holiday. I don't really like to put the focus on it, but at the same time, this is also the time of the year that can be very depressing for some people. And I know that because I've walked in those shoes. Um, I know what it's like to not have the family around the Christmas tree and a bunch of presents and blah, 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 because I grew up in foster homes. Come on now. It's not exactly the family unit. Like, you know, and we can get really depressed and down on ourselves because other people are with their families or other people are doing this. But you know what? It's also a very depressing time of the year for a lot of people. Um, we, we lost a, a good friend of ours a few years ago um, in a fire. Um, I think it's coming up on next week or in a few days now, the anniversary of when she passed away in a fire. And that's something that a family has to deal with every year around Christmas time. Now, that's a holiday that's wrecked, and that's a, that's a, that's a family that has, you know, the big family, but it's not something that's celebrated because that's what we remember. You know, this is a, this is a hard time for us. We need to remember to think about other people. You know, lift up other people, even if it's just with your words, even if it's just with um, caring about someone besides yourself, you know, checking in on people, making sure everybody's good because mental illness is a big deal and so is fucking depression. And sometimes we get so wrapped up and so lost in it that we don't know the way out. And I just want you to know that there is a way out. There are people that care about you. There, There is a reason that you're still here. And I want you to remember that even if it's not the typical blood family that you're surrounded by, that there are people out there that would be more than willing to help you. And I could be one of them for you. You know, if you guys need to reach out to me, I'm here too. So anyways, with that being said, I hope everyone has a good night and I need some fucking sleep. <laughs> I need some sleep and I'm going to start this shit over again tomorrow. Hopefully we'll be coming out with some more readings for my channel in the next few days. Take care. I love you all. Bye.